HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. I don't know what I was thinking when we named our dog Kitty. And this sweetie's become a true family member. So when we vacation, she comes too. That's why we love Red Roof. Not only are they pet friendly, You also get a great price on clean, comfortable rooms so you wake up rested and ready to hit the road again. And this summer, when we rest and repeat at Red Roof, staying two separate times can earn us a free night. Isn't that right, kitty? (coughs) Book at redroof.com. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. This podcast is uh, continuing to gain recognition as a resource for business and entrepreneurs. From MSNBC's Your Business to Inc.com to Proven to Fit Small Business and a whole bunch of other uh, sites from around the world, Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is um, on the list of the best podcasts to listen to. And while it is a great honor, and I am really thrilled that that's the case, I also am aware that it's because of the wonderful guests that I have the opportunity of speaking to. These are folks who have incredible expertise, and they give of their time and their knowledge so that you, my listeners, can do better things in your business. Today is no different. Today, my guest is Ryan O'Donnell. Ryan is co-founder and CEO of two tech platforms used by thousands of companies both large and small, for generating a consistent sales pipeline. Cellhack is a Chrome browser extension to build targeted prospect lists, and Replyify automatically sends out your cold emails so you'll never forget to follow up again. He's a growth marketer obsessed with helping sales professionals and business owners sell like a robot while still sounding like a human. Ryan implements the software platforms he's built to consistently generate over a million dollars in revenue. Ryan lives in sunny Cleveland, Ohio, as do I, 
uh, with his amazing wife, Corey, and his three proudest startups, his son, Jack, and his daughters, Charlie and Grace. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ryan. Diane, my pleasure. I think I need to shorten that bio. Thanks for, uh, for, for ripping through that. I appreciate it. Hey, it's all good, right? I mean, people need to know who you are, and, and uh, I think it's, it's all good to share with them. So, so for, for the folks a- listening, we're going to compl- talk about the complete opposite of, of what <laughs> Diane just read through, especially when you are using email for communication. Um, so, so take that with a, with a grain of salt, but glad to be That's here. That's so awesome. Right. That leads like right into it. So, um, so that's so funny because, um, sales is such an interesting thing. And I, I feel like it has changed so much just since the internet popped it, you know, it came out of the ground and turned into this, you know, just huge thing. So I'm curious, um, when you say that, you know, this is, we're going to talk about the exact opposite. What, should people really be doing uh, when it so that they're selling effectively or prospecting effectively, I guess is what I should say. I think it's a good point that, that you brought up that, you know, sales has been evolving since the, since the inception of the internet and, and, you know, there are a couple different milestones for the internet. Um, And and I think to answer your question directly, um, if you haven't changed your sales process or approach since Google IPO'd, back in what 2000 2004 um then it's time for a change right <laughs> i i remember i was on i was on wall street at the time and i literally remember sitting at a desk with you know 30 other brokers and i was a i was low on the totem pole i was a cold caller at that point and we were tasked with you know coming in on the weekends researching uh researching hoovers finding executives writing their contact info on a note card Right. And then coming in Monday through Friday, making, you know, target was 500 dials a day, 50 connects, five leads, one account, and just grinding. We, we didn't even have computers, but I remember, I remember sitting in the office when, when Google IPO would and I think where I am today in, in, you know, kind of running two tools that help to automate, you know, these, these inefficiencies with the sales process, a lot of that was born from, you know, I've been on the other side of it. I've, I, I've been on the side where I did everything manually. It didn't scale. And I think, you know, looking at the, the arc of my career and having had a lot of experience, you know, on, on both sides of the table, uh, leveraging tech and not leveraging tech, uh, yeah. I, I choose the former, right? I choose tech as, and, and processes as a way to make my process more efficient for the ultimate goal of, I want to have more sales conversations and I want to spend yeah. less time trying to get those conversations. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's interesting. So it feels like what you did was say, um, okay, I had this experience. I know what worked and didn't work and I need to automate as much of that as possible so that things like, like in your bio, um, the thing that hit me was um, this, system to send out the uh, cold email so you never forget to follow up because forgetting to follow up I think is one of the biggest challenges that small business owners have because they're you know juggling so many balls and wearing so many hats I mean I I couldn't agree more and 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 I'm going to put you on front street for a second because I did my research on you right Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and I I I fundamentally agree with your approach right but I think that what I see business owners where they, where they make mistakes and, and I'm going to go through your approach and feel free to refine here. Right. Um, some of the things that you believe that, that I garnered from your site, right. Is that um, you should never send an email first. Right. I, I believe that to an extent, I think a phone call is certainly, you know, a, a an optimal choice to, to start with and then have email kind of follow that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, and, I, I hear you on the point where, you know, in getting warm, warm introductions and introductions and referrals from folks are, you know, kind of, that's low hanging fruit. That's where you should, right. that's where you should start most certainly. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll go off on a tangent from that for a moment and saying that where I've made the mistake in the past, like in the companies right before sell hack and reply is that I, I, I followed that process and, and I didn't, 
necessarily know about you at, at the time. You didn't have a, a podcast climbing the charts and getting all this recognition way back, you know, four years ago or so. But I got to the point that I just, I ran out of referrals. And I had a solid network, right? I had a couple thousand people in my network. I just, I, I ran out of referrals and yeah. my sales slowed down, right? And, yep. it, you know, while I think, you know, referrals are a great way to go and, and, and making phone calls first, you know, is a, a, a solid first step. Um, yeah. You need to keep the funnel full and you need to do whatever you have to do to keep the funnel full. I don't care if that's, you know, going door to door, dropping off, you know, flyers that, you know, advertising at, at, at the Indians game and, and, and buying, you know, buying a spot up on the scoreboard. You need people coming in. You can't just expect them to come. And when you start to notice, you know, for the business owners and, and folks who are in sales out there, when you start to notice that there aren't as many folks knocking on your door, you aren't having as many sales meetings as you would like to have per week and thus having less, you know, qualified leads and less sales you need to start turning over more rocks. You need to change your, your approach and your mindset. You need to be open to trying new things. And, and that's kind of that experimentation and, and hitting that brick wall and saying there has to be a better way to do this. That was the inspiration for building what we built. And that's what just, you know, I, I love closing new business. I love when we get new clients. I love almost, I love even more when I have a conversation with someone and, and I can feel the light bulb going off in their head and they're like, wow, this is, you know, I can do this. Yeah. And then they, and then they give us feedback that, that the pipeline's growing and they're doing more sales and they're growing and their team goes from like one person using our tech to five people because they just raised a couple million dollars in revenue based on the sales that we helped to, to visit. like, that's, that's amazing. And I think that's, those are some of the things we're yeah. going to talk through here today. Yeah, and, and thank you for that. And uh, this is part of the reason why I wanted to have you on, because I, I agree with you. It, it, for me, the warm introduction is the first line of defense because it's the best, the easiest. But you're absolutely right. You're not going to have hundreds of those. You're going to have to do other things. And what I find with small business owners is that they don't like to cold call, that they, so they're uncomfortable picking up the phone. I think my biggest problem with email is, um, and so, and this is what I want, you know, part of what I want to talk to you about. M one of my problems with email marketing, I mean, not marketing, I love email marketing, with email prospecting is that I think people do it wholesale instead of directed and targeted and specific. And so it is, it, it, it's sort of, um, isn't connective. There's no connectivity between what they're sending out between them and the person they're trying to reach. And so it doesn't garner results. It, it you know, it, it's either too salesy or it's way too long, or there's something about it that just has no resonance at all. And so, but they do it because they feel like, well, at least I'm, I've got activity going on, but they don't get anything from it. So What's the difference, I guess, I would be my question. You know, what should they be doing? If they're going to email, what should they be doing? To your point, I'm being uncomfortable with cold calling. And then I'll answer your question directly. Um, I'm uncomfortable being broke, right? And I've, <laughs> I've been broke before. And I know that, that the way that I, that, that I changed that is that I made more cold calls. I sent more cold emails and I just, I grew this thick skin and, and shifted priorities and just, you know, went off on my merry business, figuring out a process that was repeatable. Okay. So to your point on, on the, on the email front and, and blasting, right. One of the, you know, running cell hack and, and, you know, it's a, you described it, right? It's a, it's a Chrome extension to build prospect lists. And then, you know, but the ultimate problem we're solving with it is figuring out and verifying and testing and, and finding the, the, the prospect's email address, which if you try to do it by hand for one person, it's going to take you a couple minutes. You got to figure out the different yeah. you know, permutations. You got to go test them. You got to search the web, do this and do that. Um, we automate that, that process. So, um, you know, that's in, in figuring that part out and getting more efficient there and, and building and being able to build a more efficient list and get those email addresses 
Um, the step before that, though, is really, you know, figuring out who your prospects are is, is step number one, because they're, they, they come in all different sorts of shapes and sizes, right? And, yeah. and present themselves, you know, for a lot of different opportunities. So I, I'll step back to that point. One of the first things we like to do when we hear someone come to sell hack and say, Hey, look, um, you know, I need a list of 10,000 contacts because my marketing, um, you know, VP of marketing said that, you know, we've got a trade show coming up or we just launched a new product and we need to send out, you know, a mass email. And it's like cringe. You know, I, I'm like, you, you don't like, you haven't read anything that anyone's written on the, like, this is going to end, you know, this is going to be terrible. Now from my side, I, you know, filling an order for 10,000, I make more money off of that. Right. But that's not yeah. the right approach. I want them to come back and I say, all right, well, you send out 10,000 emails. How many folks are on your sales team? You say, all right, there, there's two of us. I say, okay, let's assume you have, you know, a, a 30% open rate and then maybe a 10% response rate or a 5% response rate, right? Do you have the, you know, can you manage 500 or a thousand people requesting more information tomorrow? No, you, you can't manage that. So what happens? Those deals go cold. So yeah. I, say, I say, based on your schedule, you know, open up your calendar. How much, you know, how much free time do you have? You know, count it up. Look at your different blocks. You know, eight hours, that's not blocked off. How long are your sales calls? A half hour or your, or your qualification calls? 15 minutes, half hour, an hour. I skew towards the 15 minutes. Just that's, that's how I like to do things. Short and sweet, get to fit or not a fit and move on. Um, yeah. But based on that, I like to get to a number and they say, okay, I can do 20 more meetings per week. I say, okay, to get 20 meetings per week, um, you need, you know, you need 20 people to say that they're interested. You know, let's say you get a 5% positive response rate, right? You need to be sending out what a hundred emails per week to get 20 meetings. Right. If my math isn't completely crazy. So yeah. that's, that's your process, or at least that's a starting point for your process and getting back to your, your original question. Um, and, and I'm going to go one step back. We talked about referrals and being a great place to start. Um, yeah. If you're, if you're, pumping your network and you're asking folks for referrals, right? People are busy. So the first place to start is make it easy on them to give you a referral, right? Send them a forwardable email and it, it, that they can literally push forward and say, you know, Hey, Diane, I think you should connect with Ryan. Um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it to you. Like make it easy on them. Um, yeah. But there, there's a way to fake a referral without being shady. Okay. And, okay. and when I talk about faking a referral as it relates to cold email, and this being the polar opposite of a, a just a mass email to 10,000, you know, prospects who fits, you know, a certain criteria. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, and this is a tactic anyone listening here can, can jot down or rewind as soon as we go through it. And I challenge you to try this out and then tell me if it works or not. Um, go to LinkedIn search through your connections and I want you to think about who are some of the power brokers in it, within your connections. Right. And I want you to open their profiles in, in different tabs. And if you go to their connections on each of those person's profiles page, if you go to their connection sections, um, you'll see, you'll see like a, a magnifying glass, a search option. You can actually search within your connections connections based on certain criteria, right? Like, like, you know, title or keywords. And what you're doing at that point, if you're not able to ask for a ton of referrals or someone's slow getting back to you, for example, but they have a lot of, they have, you know, a hundred solid, um, you know, connections that are actually qualified prospects for you. Um, you can build a list of those hundred people and get their names and their companies. And then you can use a tool like Hack to get their email addresses. And then, you could use a tool like Replyify, which is that second, you know, kind of, you know, cold email automation platform that we have. And you can construct a very finite campaign that's targeted only to, you know, Diane's connections. And the first email in that, in that email sequence um, and, and the subsequent follow-ups we can talk about later, but the first email, the subject line of that is, you know, something to the extent of, you know, found you through Diane. Right. Um, or, 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 you know, we share a connection with Diane that right there, when the prospect gets that, um, you know, there is quite a bit of, of social pressure 
when someone makes a referral, right? Diane, if you made a referral to me, I'm going to follow up on that. Right. right. Cause I don't want right. to drop the ball and I don't want to be like, all right, Ryan, you know, doesn't have his, his act together. I'm going to follow up on that because of our, you know, professional relationship at this point. Right. Um, but even if you don't have, even if you don't have a direct introduction, right. Suggesting to the person that, you know, someone that they know, they don't know how well you know them, right. We might be golf buddies on the weekend uh, and, right. and, and, and the person I'm emailing saying, Hey, um, you know, found you through Diane. Um, they're going to reply to me or, or the odds of them replying to me are going to be much higher because they don't want me reporting back to you and saying, you know, you know, Susan ghosted me, right? I sent her an yeah. email and, and she ignored me. So um, there is a way. And, and, and when I talk about, you know, faking an introduction, um, the introductions are gold when they come in, you can't always get them. And sometimes there are just too many of them that using um, creative copywriting, and, you know, in your subject line to get the open or reference it in your first, you know, line of the email, um, that is a way that you can make an email very personal um, and increase the likelihood of the prospect responding to you. Pause. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so I have a question because I hear that and it conjures up a situation that a friend of mine was in where he met someone through networking and um, then she reached out to my friend and said, you know, I see on LinkedIn, you're connected to these people. Would you introduce me to him? And he said, sure, but he didn't get around to it. So she went to them and said, so-and-so suggested that I contact you. And so of course those people then took the call and then she was like really obnoxious. And so these people were calling my friend and saying, dude, did you really right. tell this person to call me? And, and it just was a total implosion. That's so, a party foul. That is a no, no. Yeah. And, and, okay. and it's interesting how, how, you know, the, the addition or, or subtraction of yeah. one or two words can make all the difference. Um, so-and-so didn't, you know, Diane didn't suggest that we speak. Yeah. I'm just saying I found you through Diane. Yeah, I know right. words really matter, but words are words are very important. Person, they really are. They really are. I guess my question. See, that, and that's I think what worries me is that people aren't going to hear what you said. They're going to hear, "Hey, go to LinkedIn, <laughs> 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 do this thing." It's like, all right, you guys, you have to listen to Ryan. This is important. So, talk about the importance of the words, please, that they need to use. Yeah, I mean that's it. that's in copywriting, you know, is its own skill set here, and and I pay very close attention to this because we, you know, we we run an email yeah. automation platform, and and one of the biggest, um, you know, hurdles in in someone actually you know getting activated and starting to use it is, I mean. It, it's, it's fear, it's self doubt, it's self doubt that they don't know how to write effective copy. And, and typically what I'll go back to them is to say, look, you're already writing these emails. They're in your sent folder. You just need to dig through them, right? This, the, the five or seven step email campaign, cold email campaign sequence that you're, that you're, you know, that we're talking about getting set up here to help automate, you know, the, the initial email and then all the subsequent follow-ups, you're already writing these. You just have to go find them. Um, huh. and, and if you don't, if you can't find them, or maybe you can find like, you know, half of them, there's, there's plenty of resources out there. I mean, we blog about it. We, we, you know, are uh, within the application we have, we kind of tee up a number of templates that you can draw inspiration from. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you, you know, for the most part, you're writing this, you just, you know, when you go into copywriter mode, it, it's if you're not a copywriter or if you're not, if you lack the confidence there, it, it tends to be a, a, a hurdle to get over. But the, the, the challenge I have there and, and when, I, you know, when I call BS on that is, you know, A, you're already writing these emails. B, um, yeah. you know, if you're, if you don't feel like you're capable of writing a couple more emails or, you know, spending some time kind of looking at reference materials and drawing from, um, you know, the experiences of others, or even drawing from your inbox, pay attention in your inbox yeah. to the emails that get you to open and the emails that you automatically delete, borrow from the good and don't do, you know, what the bad folks do. And you can experiment there. Right. And, and when we're starting up campaigns, again, 
um, these aren't, we're not blasting 10,000 emails out, right? We're talking about, in the example we gave earlier, we talked about, you know, you need to send out 100 new cold, you know, you need 100 new prospects a week to start on your cold email campaign sequence to generate the number of sales meetings that we just, you know, discovered that yeah. you learned. Um, so you're not married to that campaign, but you have to pull the bandaid off. You have to send your first hundred emails or your first 10 emails and, and you can only grow and, and learn from that. But I see way too many people kind of get caught up and excited and say, Hey, look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then they get to the point where they've got to pull the trigger and they don't. Right. And they go back to doing yeah. what they were doing and it's, Which, yeah. you know, the tools are there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a quick sponsor break and then I'll, I'll ask you some more questions. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. If you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are 8020 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall and The Go Giver by Bob Berg. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're talking with Ryan O'Donnell about email prospecting and sales techniques. So, Ryan, what would you say is the biggest mistake you see companies make when it comes to their sales techniques? Not having a process in place is Ooh, the biggest mistake that I see. I can go through five other mistakes that I also see, but focus in on the process if you want. It's not having a, not having a dedicated process. Not, and if you don't have a process, it's, it, it, a lot of that can fall back to the, the DNA of the team and of the company yeah. of you know, either not hiring the right people um, to who you know have who were you know have the ambition to go out and try new things, or it's yeah. or it's you kind of forcing a process on there. You know, I I talked to a company last week and and, and you know the guy showing me his Salesforce Salesforce great company right, um, but they have a custom message like in their Salesforce that says like if it's not in Salesforce it doesn't exist, and these and and this team was so bogged down by this process or you know, the, this like workflow. And I guess it's a process that was given to them that they couldn't deviate at all from it. And they were wondering why they weren't growing And you know, tools like your CRM or these other tools that you have, they're, they're meant to help. They're meant to help you not to hold you back. And I think what, where we see, and I'm going to demographics for a second, it doesn't matter, you know, age, religion, sex, creed, whatever, like you can all be successful at doing this, but um, you know, this sort of process of sales automation has really, you know, kind of come up in the last four years. And um, from a demographic standpoint, we tend to find um, like the millennial set, the tech forward set, um, you know, uh, younger kids. And I say kids cause I'm, I'm in my mid thirties now, but, you know, coming out of school and, and junior on the sales team and they're tasked with prospecting and, you know, they've been raised with the internet and they get handed a process and, and the most successful ones, you know, flip the script and, and, and yeah. go off and try things on their own. And it's only through that experimentation to help build out a more efficient process that we see, you know, growth start to become achieved within a sales organization. I think that is such a good point because they, it, it's such a great point. And we really do need to be open to doing different things, you know, exploring, trying things that work for us as opposed to trying to follow a process that is so that puts you in a straitjacket. especially if you find it, you know, if it's not working for you, you have to be able to shift. Right. And, and I think that, is it working for you or is it not working for you? It, it's, yeah. there's a very easy way to figure that out. Right. And it's going back to your calendar. 
and it's looking at your, at, at your sales goals or your revenue goals, you know, if you're a business owner and it's saying, you know, obviously, you know, everyone wants to be making more money and have more clients and, and generating more revenue. But if, if you've got too much free time on your calendar or you don't have, you're not hitting your, your number of demos per week or your revenue per month, um, that's a, I don't want to say it's an easy thing to change, but it's yeah. changeable. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and you can change it. And the first place to look is, you know, it's the top of the funnel. What are you doing right now? And then what is it producing? And, you know, like what, you know, some of the tactics and, and things that we're talking through here today. Um, if you're not doing these, these are, these are very low cost, low time investment, um, you know, initiatives that you can test. And, and, and the outcome of that test is it's going to work and you're going to make more and do more, or it might not work for you and you're not out much. Right. Right. Do you, um, okay. So biggest thing is they don't have process, which I totally agree with. And I, and so it's interesting. I mean, that's one of the things that I think is so important, not only that they don't have process, but that maybe the process they have, as we said, is not working for them. Um, and that they're not curious enough to seek something different and try it, as you said, low cost, try it, see if it works. But you got to do some things. So I want to flip it around on you. And as opposed to biggest mistake let's talk about what some of the most successful and let's talk b2b okay business to business sellers or founders you know small business owners what are they doing that most people aren't i'm thinking i'm not a mute um, <laughs> and i'm thinking about where to start so i i'll okay. give you one i'll give you one example um from last friday right and this is a, the, the, this is me this is a personal example Okay. So I have a, I have a process and, and my process um, looks, looks something like this. Um, I know who my prospects are. I know that I have five different prospect segments or we call them segments, personas, archetypes, right? I know that I speak to each of those different segments differently. I'll speak to a VP of sales at a 10,000 person company differently than I'll speak to a VP of sales at a 10 person company because yeah. they care about different things. Um, yeah. But I, I have these, these personas built out. So I have a, I have a daily process where I go out and, and I, I build a list of prospects based on you know, the segment that I'm gonna be working on. Um, I have a pre-written email campaign already. So I just build a list, I get their emails. Um, so this was last Friday. So I spent probably 10 minutes building a list. I got their emails, I pushed them into a, a campaign um, that started delivering at 9 a.m. that day. And I went and played nine holes of golf with my dad. Okay. Um, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. But um, I came back from, from playing nine holes of golf and I had six replies in my inbox. And I had four requests to have a demo. I had it, it, saying that they're interested in, and in, you know, if they're interested in speaking, what are next steps? Um, I had one person who said, Hey, not a good time for us, you know, circle back in, in six months. And I had, had one person say, please take me off your list. Yeah. Right. Um, wow. but, but that happened while I was doing other things. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's the, that's the whole, whole goal with this. Um, I'll pause in case you want to refine the question or, or ask a follow-up. Well, I wanted just to give a, like that, that's what I did last week. And, you know, that is my process. That's what I do. If not every single day, every other day. And it takes 20 minutes of my day, you know, to generate these responses coming in consistently. One of the most interesting things that I heard, you know, for me that I heard in there was, that having a process, having a system allows you to multitask, so to speak, but it allows you to be doing more than one thing at a time because you're allowing the system to handle, you know, the process, the automation to handle 
a good part of the process so you don't have to, so that it doesn't have to be you, the business owner, you, the human who's doing it. A hundred percent. And, and I'm going to, I might preempt a, a, a question you had okay. um, later, but you know, for the business owner out there or for the, for the sales professional who might have, you know, a little bit of leeway from, you know, from, from the executive team um, to do things. Right. Uh -huh. um, and, uh -huh. and, and those things are, you know, as a, as, as a, as a business professional, right. You are, you're, you're personally measured and you're measured by, by, you know, the rest of the world um, by your business growth and, and your success yeah. is it, your sex, success, you know, your financial success is measured by that. Um, and we'll keep the personal kind of success out of this, but um, that nine holes of golf to me was, was a bonus that, that was a yeah. success. Um, yeah. That aside, um, you know, that's how you're measured. So, so for me, I like to, you know, I'm working inside of my, or I work on my business when I, you know, send out cold emails and research prospects and, and design new campaigns. Um, that's how I work. I'm inside of my business. I work on my business by, by doing things like this, right? Having a conversation yeah. with you about a topic yeah. that, that we're both well-versed on and, you know, sharing some knowledge with folks in the spirit of, you know, education and hopefully someone will take you know, some people, you know, people will take things away from this and, and go and be more successful. But right. I found you specifically because, you know, we were, we had a marketing meeting about two months ago and, you know, podcasts in general for us are, you know, it's a great way to, you know, create evergreen content, right? So I can create content yeah. that's out there. I can have a conversation with another smart person in the space like you. And, you know, I learn from this, right? And these conversations pique my curiosity. And then there's a bunch of folks listening and, you know, there might be conversations that I have after this podcast goes live um, that, that, you know, turn into, you know, turn into something. We'll just, right. we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. So po podcasts for us are, are good. It, they're a good channel for, for us. Now you don't right. just wake up one day, uh, you know, unless you're, you're Elon Musk or, or, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk and, and have, you know, 30 requests to join someone's podcast, right? So sometimes just like with sales, you have to go out there and, and create your own opportunities. Right. So, you know, in one of the, the, the sites that you mentioned where, you know, you're listed as one of the top, you know, 50, um, you know, business podcasters. Um, I, I went out and made a list. I made a list of the top 50 business podcasters and I, and I whittled that down to 40 just to get like the really relevant ones. And then, you know, I was able to, to find your email address. And then I created a very customized campaign um, with a five-step email sequence where I introduced myself. I gave, you know, the established credibility demonstrating, you know, here are the podcasts I've, I've been on before. And then the, my second email, I actually suggest 10 topics that we can talk about. And you responded to that. And, yeah. you know, I had, I had 10 other responses from that. So in the past two months, um, you know, I, I've been a guest on, on seven different podcasts and again, we're all talking about, I talk about different things there. So it's not, you know, if you find me somewhere else, yeah. you'll, you'll probably get some fresh content. Um, but that, that, that is a way to leverage this, right? It's yeah. a way to leverage this entire process. It's not all, you know, for B2B, it's not all just about, you know, I have prospects and I need to have demos. Right. But, you know, challenge yourself. If you, if you're a subject matter expert, if you're a business owner out there, um, you know, and a subject matter expert about expenses or accounts receivable or shipping, um, there are, there are interesting people out there who, you know, like Diane, who have, you know, engaged audiences and talk about your topic. And I challenge you to go out and start to build your brand, right. And use this type of, of process to go out and find opportunities to, to be a thought leader and write a guest blog post about something you know a lot about or suggest that, you know, you do a, a have a conversation on a podcast. Um, that's one other example of just things that, that, you know, that some people are doing to set themselves apart from the rest. And, and there is no limit. There's no rule book here. 
um, there's a playbook that's starting to get built. It, and if you listen to me, you can, you can start to pick up on some of the different tactics that I employ to do different things in my business to lead to growth. Um, but you know, if you're in sales and you have flexibility, or if you're a business owner and you call your own shots, um, you can use the same type of approach for, you know, a lot of other ways of, you know, getting sales, even if that's your, your ultimate goal, right. Or, or building your network or establishing a content strategy and doing things different. Like these are all, you know, it's not like cold emailing is, is the end all be all. It's a component of the process, just as, you know, making cold calls is a component of the process, just as getting referrals or going to networking events or, you know, doing all these different things. There are so many different things you can do in so little time in the day that my hypothesis is you need, you know, you need to automate whatever you can so you can focus on the things that require a human touch. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And thank you for telling that story because you're right. I was going to ask you to tell it. And one of the things that I pick up on it is you picked a target. You had, you knew uh, the relevancy between you and them. You had a, a, something to say that was resonant, right? So the reason I responded was because the way that that email came across was very connective to what I am doing with this podcast and, and all those things. So I think that's a piece of it that's really, really important for people to understand. It's what are you saying in that email that is working. So I'd like it if you would explain that. So that's in Replyify. Is that correct? That's where that process is created? Yes. Okay. So would you explain that somewhat so people understand what that is? Because I feel like we're sort of talking about it sure. um, up in the air. So. Got it. Um, and, it, and, you know, following up on, on your last point, um, and for the naysayers out there, the folks who are saying, well, you know, cold email, spam, and no, it's not. You know, it is not, it is not spam. Um, if you follow the rules yeah, and, and the right. government lays out the rules for you on, uh, on, you know, on, you know, how to be can spam compliant. Um, my, my goal was to start a conversation. So I went and I found the list of the top 10. I'm going to take you through, this is the end end process, right? I found the okay. list of the, of the top 50, um, you know, business podcasters. I whittled that down to 40 because 10, 10 weren't necessarily relevant um, to what I was, you know, to, to my objective, which was to have a conversation like this. My goal was to have a conversation um, like we're doing right here. And my value proposition or, or my, my hypothesis was, you know, Diane's running a podcast. She needs, she needs, you know, just like your business might need a steady flow of leads um, you know, to hit your revenue targets, she needs a steady flow of interesting people to talk with, um, yeah. to to continue to create you know new episodes and and grow the podcast. So so it's, it's a mutualistic or symbiotic relation. We can help each other, and that's the that's the approach I took. So I got the names. Um, I used Cell Hack to get the email addresses, and then I went to Replyify, and you know Replyify is it's a cold email automation platform. Um, what like MailChimp is for your marketing automation and sending out your, your nurture campaigns and your, 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 your transactional emails and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Replyify is, is analogous. So MailChimp is for your marketing team to send out to opt-ins. Replyify is a very similar tool, but built for your non-opt-ins. Um, and it's built for the sales team, right? Because MailChimp, in terms of service, they don't let you send out cold emails. It's against right. the rules, right? Right. Um, yeah. So we built a tool where you could, you can create a, and you can create as many campaigns as you want. And a campaign is a, is a sequence of emails um, with a, you know, with with a time interval between them. So email one, wait three days. Email two, wait seven days. Email three, wait ten days. Email four, right? And it follows whatever sequence you have set up. Okay. Um, it connects directly to your inbox, so no fancy templates. It's all, it's all, you know, it's text-based. Connects to your inbox. It's like having 
an elf live inside of your inbox and send all these emails for you. And all you're doing is you're supplying, you're feeding it with new contacts. And those contacts are, are you know, they're, they're getting emails directly from your inbox or, you know, directly from your, your email account. They're getting email one on day one. And then anyone who doesn't reply to it because a reply automatically pauses them. You don't want someone to reply and say, Hey, I'm interested. And yeah. then they get your next email. So it's got all the bells and whistles and features you need, you know, to protect the automation, but it is pure automation. Email one goes out three days later, email two goes out, so on and so forth. Um, so what I sent to you was, you know, my first email was subject line, get an episode booked question mark. Right. And I referred to the fact that I was listening to your podcast, which I did. And then I, I, I shared some other podcasts I was, that I was on. It, this was five sentences long. I said, hey, I was listening to your podcast and realized there are probably a lot of other people out there who listen, who tune in to get smart, right? I was wondering if we can partner up and record something. Here are some examples of podcasts I've previously recorded. If you're interested, reply back with next steps and then stay awesome and keep up the great work. That was email one. Three yeah. days later, I send, uh, you know, my next email is new episode ideas. Hey, I'm interested in recording conversation for your podcast. I looked at the topics you covered and I came up with a few ideas that'd be great for your audience. And then I list them out. So I keep kind of going and all of my emails are very customized and fine tuned to my right. audience. And, and with the goal of making it easy for you to say, yeah, this guy, he knows what he's talking about. And I have, I have evidence here of some other people who've, you know, kind of said, yes, he knows what he's talking about. And we've published it. Exactly. And then he already you know, I don't have to do the hard work because he suggested a couple topics and yeah. it just, I, I made it really easy for you to say, okay, what, let's talk. Yeah. And, and whether it's, you know, for a podcast or, or for sales, it's the same basic process. Yeah. And you can have as many of these very relevant, customized, personalized campaigns depending on your different, um, you know, prospect personas or, 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 you know, prospect segments, however you refer to them. Um, and because of that personalization, um, it doesn't make the automation feel fake, right? It comes across right. as very real and it is very real. It's just, I didn't waste, you know, I didn't waste two hours sending out 40 emails and then put a reminder in my calendar to come back three days later and mm -hmm. send those same, you know, send a follow up to those 40 emails, right? I just, I let the dog eat, I let it do its thing. And, you know, the outcome was a lot of time freed up to have a lot more conversations that this process is helping to create. Thank you so much for that. It, it, I, that, that really helps a lot. And I, Partly because, well, I mean, I think it always helps to be able to really hear the process, but also because what's valuable to me in that is hearing the the customization of it, that it's targeted, that the way that you communicated wasn't that scripted, salesy, I have something you need, I'm sure you do, even though we've never met before. It, it, it's more, um, it's a softer touch, I guess. But it also implies that you've done your research, that you have something. It reminds me of this woman, Jill Conrath, and she writes all these sales books about, you know, selling to big companies and stuff. And she had a really successful sales career because she would research her prospects before she would call them. And this was, you know, 30 years ago before the Internet. She didn't call a lot of people, but when she researched them and found the ones that made sense to her, she, when she called them, she had something to say to them. So her closing ratio was really high because she was connecting. And I listened to you and I think that's just, you just automated her whole process. It wasn't available back then. Yeah. Right? And, <laughs> and, and yeah. going back to like one of the first few things that, that we discussed today was if you haven't changed your process in the last, you know, God forbid you haven't, it's, it's, you've, you've changed, you've tweaked it or changed it in the last 30 years. But like, if it's been a couple of years since, since you've updated your process and you're not trying new things or you haven't experimented, um, there's a whole new world out there. Yeah. Right. And there are people who are getting really, really good at this and they're dialing it up. So those hundred emails I send per day, I mean, there are people who do this very, very effectively and they send out, you know, 
a couple hundred emails or a thousand emails per day. So if you're sitting there and, and you're and you're you know wondering if this is right for you or not, um, you know there's a good chance that you know your competitors are out there thinking about things like this. And if you're not in a market or an industry where you, you know like B two B tech software as a service like that that market is you know it, it's it's cold emails are commonplace now right? Folks are used yeah. to getting them. Um, yeah. But it, so, it, you know, but for a lot of other industries, like your, you know, like a manufacturing industry, right? Through yeah. B2B selling yeah. parts to, to, you know, for aerospace or something like that, um, mm -hmm. you know, or commercial real estate, right? These are, those are two examples of industries that um, where this type of information has not been, you know, readily disseminated and it's not being used by your competitors likely yet. Right. Like th there is still a greenfield opportunity to, you know, have an effective strategy leveraging, you know, what we're talking about here with, you know, cold email prospecting um, and, and get ahead of the game yeah. and do it correctly. Because yeah. what most, you know, what's mostly happening in your industry, especially if it is, um, you know, more of a, more of a traditional um, industry or not necessarily the most tech forward, um, yeah. that, that, that selling is coming from, from, you know, and think about your marketing team, right? Sales are coming from marketing who build out basically a, a, a fancy picture and they email a picture that they email a yeah. big image that has a lot of bullet points and, and, uh, you know, it, it's very hard to digest. So when you make, when you can automate something that looks and feels like it's coming from a sales rep and you can automate the follow-up because most people don't follow up. Right. It, it balls right. in your court, right? Right. What are you waiting yep. for? Yep. Yep. I really get it. I, I, the key for me, and I know I keep saying this, but I feel like I have to repeat it is that the messaging has to be spot on. So it's not just about getting the list and then creating this, process of emails going out the messaging has to be such that it really it read like in order to get someone to open it the subject line's got to be something interesting or it's it's got to be non-salesy i'm not really sure because i got to tell you i get stuff every day on linkedin in my regular email that is absolute selling or it's sort of odd selling. It's, it's, um, and I'll give you an example. I got a, I must have connected with this guy and this is what I got. Thanks for connecting. If you need any digital media stuff done, such as websites, graphic designer, internet marketing, let me know. Also, if you're into saving money, I'm also an energy consultant. <laughs> I help people get lower rates. I'm sorry. On that depending on location, just let me know. And I can let you know at no cost if you can save money on your energy bill. Okay. Wah, wah. Yep. Wah, wah. Yeah. And I get those all the time. So really, honestly, when I get something like what you sent, it's so refreshing that I'm going to reach out <laughs> regardless of what I just, because I think, okay, I have to hear more here because, it, it's the right way to be communicating. And so I think my input on this for my listeners is it's not just about the automation. It's about the content. And, you know, one of the things I thought you said that, that I really enjoyed was look at your inbox, look at what you get that you like and what you get that you don't like, because those are great indicators of the ways of communicating good and bad. 100% agree. And, and I have two folders in my inbox. One is good cold email yeah. examples and the other is bad. And, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I get geeky on this type of thing. I don't expect everyone to go out and create new, two new folders in their, in their inbox, but you, you know, pay attention to it for the next yeah. week or, or, or next two weeks, pay attention to the emails you get that you would have otherwise deleted or ignored and pay attention to the ones that you actually opened up. And, yeah. and, and start, start there and, and borrow yeah. from the good and, 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 you know, and keep a record and don't do what the, what the bad ones did. And the second thing is, 
Um, it, you know, we just wrote a blog post on this at blog.replyify. That's R-E-P-L-Y-I-F-Y.com. Wrote a blog post and Hemingway never said this, but it's attributed to him where, you know, um, it suggested that he said, you know, write drunk, edit sober. Yeah. Um, so, so we just did a blog post on this and, and the, there are some example email templates if folks are sitting out there and thinking, well, I don't know how to do this. You know, there are some examples of, of things that, that you can draw from, but that tends to be, you know, my approach. Once I get the kids to sleep at night, um, yeah. you know, my wife and I, we kind of sign on for our own second shifts and, and get some work done. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I, I, I like to pour myself a, a, a small bourbon and, you know, it, it, get loose with your writing, right? Yeah. Think, it, yeah. You don't have to live inside yeah. of, of this constraint of, of what you're used to and sounding formal. Like you can let some of your personality, sure. you know, shine through and, and at the very least experiment. Right. And once yeah. you find and if you use a tool like Replyify that, you know, can show you, you know, your open rates, your click rates, your response yeah. rates, and you can figure out what's working, what's not working. You can experiment on a very, on very, you know, finite groups and small volumes. And then when you find that, that, that combination that, that works, then you can step on the gas. And then yeah. you can add, start adding more prospects to that. And, and you've kind of whittled out the bad focused on the good and and you know from there it's just it's it's repeatable yeah. and that's the goal with this right it, it, it's not yeah. it's not mass we're not thinking mass how can we do as right. much as we possibly can it's repeatable how can i keep yeah. my week as busy as i need it to be to hit or, or beat my numbers and, th and there's exactly. a very simple formula there okay so thank so speaking of that because thank you I, I think this has been just awesome will you tell my listeners how they can get in touch with you how they can find out more about um cell hack and replyify yeah so we we live in our inbox we spend a lot of time in our inbox um, email is a good place if folks have a direct question for me uh, right. ryan R-Y-A-N at Replyify. That's R-E-P-L-Y-I-F-Y.com, Replyify.com. Um, send me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, you can get, we have, you know, Replyify is free to use. If you don't do, you know, if you don't have a lot of volume, if you're not sending out a lot of emails, you can use it for free, no strings. Um, so my challenge would be, um, you know, use it, yeah, try yeah. it right? Like walk away from this campaign or walk away from, from this, you know, conversation, go and build a list using cell hack, get some email addresses, write out a campaign. And if you can't do one at two o'clock in the afternoon, then wait until, you know, 11 o'clock in the evening and start storyboarding your campaign, right? What emails do you want going out when? Um, and you know, you can, you can do all of this for free to an extent. And then when you get to the point that you need to start, you know, stepping on the gas and, and ramping things up, there are, you know, there are plans to suit, right? And, and, and it, these are, you know, these are not big investments. They're month to month. And, you know, they're, they're not big investments um, for the return on investment. We blog a lot. We don't do a ton on Twitter or Facebook yet. We're growing that channel, but um, we like to, you know, have conversations like this and, and disseminate content um, on our blog in such a way that you can read something borrow a few, you know, borrow a few ideas or templates or, or, you know, suggestions and actually put them to action. Nice. Well, I'm going to try it. So, I mean, seriously. And, and I would say I'm a convert, except that I totally get what you're talking about. And I'm so glad that we had this conversation because on the because number one, uh, people do have to do more than getting referrals unless they're independently wealthy. Number two, um, they have to do it in a way that has a process and an automation so that they can do the other things in their business at the same time. And three, they um, need to be able to find the the um, contact information for the people who are in their target market. So that they can have a, a really smooth system and they're not spending a lot of time on things that are outside of their uh, core competency, you know, or the thing that they really should be doing. So right Agreed. on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 
And I always like to thank the listeners because you're who we're doing this for and our sponsor. Please remember to uh, visit audibletrial.com slash business growth to get your free trial of audible.com and a free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We We out. out.